What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I am going to show you how to make an insane Mafia game. It's going to be a very easy to follow, so let's get started. Alright, so obviously the first thing that we will need is a really cool Mafia environment. And that's why I got this 1990 kind of office that fits very well into our Mafia game. So this is part of the new Black Friday bundle from Lirtis Studios. And Lirtis creates super high quality Unreal Engine environments for the marketplace. And they just released a special limited time Black Friday bundle. You can grab more than 47 packs worth $6,387 for only $39 dollars using my affiliate link and coupon code BF60 to get an insane Black Friday discount. So link is in the description if you want to grab this environment and other 46 environments which are amazing. Now also we of course need a Mafia character and that's why I'm going to be using this one which is also included in the pack. That's right it's also included in the Black Friday bundle and this one does look absolutely insane as you can see. So let's get started by actually having a movable character and we can replace with this character over here. So first things first, go to add, then feature or content pack and let's go and select third person, okay? And click on add to project. That way we now have a third person movement that we can move around with. Now also go to the wall settings and on the game mode override, you set this to third person game mode. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and check if we do have a player start or not. Okay, we do have player start right over here. So we literally just press play. We now spawn with the character and we can move around. But it doesn't look very good because our character is basically like running in an environment that we should be walking around. And then also, of course, um, there's some other th stuff like, you know, the camera uh, smoothing and things that we need to add. So first things first, go to third person blueprint and open up the third person character. And right over here, just go to the character movement component. And then simply scroll down until you see the max walk speed. This is basically the speed that the character goes through. So let's put in like 250, something like that. And of course, it's a value that we can play around with to really get what we want. So now if again, I just press play, we are walking instead, which is great. But the camera is still too far away. So let's go to the camera boom, which is what determines the length of our camera and our character. And on the arm length, which is this distance, let's put it like 200. So now this is gonna be half and yeah, pretty, pretty cool. Now let's also just tilt the camera to be a bit more on the right, you know, adding like, a, like an offset. So on the socket offset, we can add on the Y axis, like maybe like 50. So it moves into the right as you can see. And now, yes, we are having like more um, on the shoulder view, which is great for our Mafia game. So let's put in like maybe 45 and this is the thing that we can play around with. And then also in the camera boom, search for lag on the deals panel and enable camera lag and rotation lag. And let's set both to be around 12. And this just adds a smoothing when rotating the camera and when the camera moves. And the bigger this value is, the less smooth it will be. So that's why we don't wanna have a big, big smooth, use a subtle one. So now as you can see, when I move the camera, it's way smoother. And you will actually notice this when you play the game. And then obviously when moving around also, uh, actually for the camera like speed, maybe we can even go to something like eight. As you can see, it's more smooth. So I do like this. So yeah, now it looks way better as you can see, like a huge improvement because instead of running around the camera being far away, we are more settled into our actual environment where, you know, we go slower, we have more of a shoulder POV, the camera is smoothed out. So way more improvements. All right, so now it's time to actually replace the mannequin with our actual, you know, mafia boss, okay? So to do this, there's a couple options. If we go here, and select our mesh, we can go and just change this to be the Mafia boss, which honestly, I don't know how his code, oh hey, it's full clothes. So when we do this, <laughs> as you can see, because there's a different bone hierarchy and structure and scaling and all that stuff, you know, we cannot re just replace our character like that. So it's Ctrl Z, and what we have to do is real-time retargeter. Real-time retargeter will basically just copy the animations of our many into our Mafia boss 
in a seamless way that adapts into his own structure. So to do this, very simple, you just go to characters, mannequins, anims, and then for example, unarmed, and then basically you find like the idle animation, right? It has to be any animation, it doesn't matter. Okay, now this has to be an animation from the mannequin, right? So on here, you just right click and click on we target animations, and on the target, this will be the mafia full clothes, okay? And then what we can do is just click on export as retarget. And then we can save this on the mafia character. So create a new folder, retargeter, and then just export, close, and we're good. Now, just right click, go into animation, and let's create an animation blueprint. Name this, uh, so we have to select the SK. CH02, which is our Mafia character, and then ABP underscore Mafia boss. Open this up, and then simply over here, just add a retarget post from Mesh, and then over here, select the auto generated that we just created. Okay, perfect. So now over here, what we can do is select our Mesh. And remember, we are inside of the third person character. Add a child skull to Mesh, and this will be our Mafia boss. And then what we can do is simply select this to be our Mafia boss. And then on the anime class, also to be Mafia boss. As you can see now, it's actually copying the animation, but leaving the correct scaling. So it's not buggy. So now on the mesh, which is the mannequin, we can search for visibility and disable this. And in this drop down, put this also to refresh bones so that it will also animate when it's not visible. And now when we actually press play, we have our Mafia boss. And it's already looking pretty, pretty cool. As you can see, great, great improvement. Now, obviously you can play around with more stuff, like for example, the walk speed. Maybe it can actually be a bit lower. So we could do like 180 instead of 250 or things like that, right? Um, this really depends on like the animation plan space that you have. In this case, we're using the default one. I think this one's pretty good, 230, yeah. You know, actually, actually 250 was good. <laughs> yeah, so obviously this is a thing you can just play around with, but I'm liking this, all right. So now let's add just some functionality. So we will get a quest or a mission or however you wanna call it when we get into this desk or this one or something, right? So you go to your desk and you will have a sort of quest that you have to complete, as simple as that, okay? So let's go over here and right click and create a new folder. This will be UI, okay? And let's simply go ahead and just right click, scroll down, user interface, and create a new widget blueprint. User widget. That would be underscore and then something as I uh, used like the prompt or something, right? So this will appear on the table in 3D so that we can interact with it. So in the palette, you search for canvas panel, drag this in, and then what we can do is simply drag a text. And actually, you know what? We don't even need a canvas panel because we only want the text to be dynamic. So just click on fill screen, click on desired, and now we only have the text as you can see. So then what we can do is something as simple as just like new quest or something like that, whatever you guys want. And then obviously in the font, we can play around with some stuff, for example, put in it italic and you know, so on, right? We can also add like a little outline, maybe like a two, so that it looks good in game. Now we can just go into a new blueprint. So just right click, new blueprint class, actor, and this will be our quest table. Open this up. And this quest table is gonna be very simple. So it's gonna simply have the widget that we just created. And this will be the prompt widget. And this prompt widget, if we scroll down, we'll have the widget class of our prompt. And then we can just make this like 100 and 100, as you can see now, it's a bit smaller. 150 maybe. Okay, this no, this will be 100, and this will be 150. There we go. So it fills in. Uh, also, one thing real quick in our UI, let's make sure to select our text and put this to be centered on the middle, so that you know it's fully centered. Perfect. And then what we can do is just put the space to be on screen, so that it will uh, scale depending on the distance of the camera. Then just go ahead and just add a box collision or a sphere collision, whatever you guys want. Uh, let's do a sphere. And this will be our trigger. So when we get into this point, we will assign the quest, if that makes sense. So let's go ahead and just make this a bit bigger, maybe like 80. 
and let's make the light thinness a bit bigger and yeah something like that so now what we can do is just go into our table which will be like for example this one and simply drag this new blueprint which is the quest table right so basically when we reach this uh, point over here we will get assigned with our quest and also of course if we press play you can see that we have a new quest uh, widget appearing so we know that we need to go over here and obviously when we go into it we're actually uh, assigning the quest which is what we have to do right now so let's create another ui which will be the current quest that we have selected so iub underscore and then let's say something as um you know active quest right it will be the one that you have active so then over here you search for a canvas panel so we can add things into the screen space and then we add two texts so the first one is going to be just the quest or actually active quest i think it makes more sense and this will be bold nice and big so let's make it a bit bigger maybe like 35 or something like that and obviously we'll be pinned over here and then we'll just copy and paste this and this will be the quest name right or the description or whatever you want and this will be italic or actually just light yeah light is pretty cool and then obviously it will be a bit smaller maybe like 30 or something like that so you have the active quest and then the quest name or description or whatever it is so for the quest name this will be dynamic right it will need to change depending on the quest so just change the name to be quest name text and then click on as variable so we can access it from outside perfect so now what we need to do is a new quest uh, component that we can add into the player so it's modular and we can you know set for any quest that we want so just right click new blueprint class and this will be an actor component bpc for blueprint component underscore quest okay so this will be need to add it into the player so simply go and find third person blueprints third person character and just add bpc quest perfect so now the player has this component so now on the component we can add the code to assign this so this will be something as you custom event and assign quest okay perfect so when we assign the quest if my unreal engine doesn't crash what we want to do is basically just create a new widget with the actual quest on the screen which is the active quest and what we'll do is just promote this into a variable so quest widget perfect and then what we can do is just add this into the viewport perfect so now that we have this what we call it it will just assign but we need a parameter with the actual quest name itself right what quest do we need to do so put this to be a string and that's it okay perfect and obviously we are only going to do this if we don't have a active quest already so we can get right click convert to validate get and we can do if it's not valid so if our widget is not created that means that we don't have a current quest assigned so that way we can go ahead and set this quest to be active if that makes sense and then what we have to do is just basically get the actual um, quest name text that we created and then just set the text okay and it will be this uh, function over here and obviously the name will be the one that we receive as a parameter so just assign it and that's it perfect and then we can on top of that just play a quick sound 2d and it'll be like you know i don't know something like a pickup you know a simple pickup sound perfect and that's it so now we just need to call this from whenever we need it, which is from the quest table so on the trigger just scroll down and click on component begin overlap and we will just cast into the third person character and in this case it's not worth to use an interface because our level is very simple and we're going to have a direct reference to the player it doesn't matter it's good so you right click drag and then uh, sorry left click actually and then get the bpc quest okay because we're adding this in a modular code and then what we can do over here is simply call the uh, assign quest or yeah whatever you call it okay perfect and then what we can do is just right click on the quest name and put it as a variable and then 
simply put in a default value so it's not empty so this could be like your quest name or something and then click on this eye icon so when we click on the eye icon when we select our quest table from the level and go into details we can actually put in whatever name we want so this might be like find the cops you know whatever random stuff right you want to do and now when i press play as you can see we still have the new quest notification and i can go over here and there we go active quest find the cops but obviously the new quest prompt is still over there we don't want to have that on the middle so what we want to do is simply go into the actual quest table and we're going to get the prompt widget and simply set the visibility to be false so that it actually disappears and let's do one last quick thing okay this will be false on the active quest and we're gonna basically just do like a little animation like new quest you know so drag a new text over here set the justification to be on the middle right over here and then new quest okay perfect then this will be like maybe like 45 or something it's a bit big and then you set the alignment to be 0 0.5 and also 0 0.5 and this one zero zero sorry this is actually the anchor on the top and now yes we can set this to zero zero so it'll be perfectly anchored we just need to move it a bit down perfect and then we're just gonna create a new animation but first change the color to be maybe like you know like this and then we can simply add a little outline perfect so now in animations this will be the quest assigned just click this over here and then we will just find the actual color and opacity and we'll change the alpha to start at zero add a keyframe and then a bit after we'll just add it to be one and then it will be one until here and then it will go back to zero so basically we got this quick animation where it goes in and out and actually okay we need to disable the outline because the outline doesn't support transparency by default so it will be just look better like this okay here we go new quest and that's it so now what we can do is go to the graph and basically on the event construct which is the begin play we can just wait one frame until we have the quest name text assigned and then what we can do is just get the animation and do a play animation node so that the animation will actually play okay perfect so now if we actually press play let me just make this a bit bigger we can walk into the new quest over here and got a new quest and we got the find the cops so that's it guys if you found this video helpful i would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to my channel and if you want to get insane assets with a new black friday bundle check out the first link in the description because it's literally one of the biggest ones that we've done so far in the real engine community now yes with all i said bye bye